Thank you once again and welcome to Adelante Chicago. Bienvenidos, I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you for joining us. Well, it is the largest Latino film festival in the U.S. For the last 39 years, the Chicago Latino Film Festival has promoted the work of filmmakers from Latin America, Spain, Portugal, and the U.S. And here to tell us a little bit more about what to expect this year is Alejandro Riera. He's a communications manager for the International Latino Cultural Center of Chicago. And joining him is Andrea Florence, program director of the Chicago Latino Film Festival. Welcome to the both of you. This is always so fun. It is always fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, it's 39 years. 39 years. So next year's going to be big. That's yeah, the big the one. We're ready. Okay. Even though we have a festival ahead of us, we're beginning to make plans for the 40th, thinking about what, how to make that festival special. Yeah, it's special every year, though. You said it best. And you've got some special productions this year. Mm -hmm. And Andrea, you actually Very. helped pick some of them out. What yeah. was... What were some of the things that you were looking for, some of the flavor that you were looking for as you picked some of these movies? Yeah, well, of course, I'm looking for the best of the best, um, but I'm also thinking about um, having a very flavorful program. Like, we want to have uh, as many films as many countries. This year, we have uh, films from, from 23 countries. So it's representation is it's a big part of it. It's um, representation, mm -hmm. and we're looking for... Uh, traditional narrations, but also experimental films, hybrid documentaries. We want to have a really eclectic program. So, yeah. and I think this year is a is a very good example of that. And Alejandro, you've been a part of this for years. You've seen it evolve yes, through the years. Yeah, I've seen it evolve as a journalist and then working inside the festival. One of the things I've always said to people about the Latino Film Festival is that it offers a great moment in time of what Latin American cinema and Hispanic cinema are going through at that moment. I mean, if you look at the history of the festival, you'll find that we've, most of the films that uh, we've chosen for the 39 years reflect pretty much what's happening across the continent in terms of cinema, you know, in terms of new idioms, new languages, economic challenges. I mean, we've, we've you know, there have been hard years for us in which Latin American cinema was down and out and we had to make of Tripas Corazón to choose <laughs> the films. Yeah. So if anybody wants to write a history about Latin American cinema, they can pretty much look at all of our catalogs and get a good sense of the ups and downs of that cinema. Okay. Uh, this year you've got some special productions. I want to go through some of them and have you guys sort of explain mm -hmm. what they're about and give us the plot line. Amor y Matemáticas. I've never had any love for math, but in this movie, <laughs> apparently Amor y Matemáticas is a big thing. I'll let you get started well, with that Amor one. Amor y Matemáticas is the name of a song the lead character in the film writes. Okay. It's our opening night film. Uh, at the AMC River East, uh, and it's directed by Claudia St. Luz. Uh, okay. In fact, we're opening and closing the festival with films directed by women this year. And this is the story of a former boy band star who ends up living this stay-at-that-home life in Monterrey, and then a fan convinces him one day to just pick up the guitar and reignite his career. That's the core of the plot. So there's much more going on. There's a little bit, it, the, the humor is a little bit offbeat. It's not exactly the kind of th humor that will make you sort of laugh, but it sort of makes you sort of a smile and giggle. Uh, but there's also a little bit of dark humor, especially involving a dog. And that I'm can be gonna, fun, okay. Uh, it can be fun, not what happens to the dog, though, no, and I'm not gonna say more. Okay, I think and, we'll this need to is, find and this is April 13th? April 13th, opening correct. Day uh, we have the lead actor, Nicolas Quijano, coming in for opening night, and uh, we're actually doing a second showing of the film on Saturday night as well, so he'll be present for the uh, post screening Q&A as well. Okay, second one on the list, Eami. Uh, you know a little bit more about this <laughs> one, and we'll show some video as we're talking about it. Yes, Eami is a very interesting, um, exciting hybrid documentary, and it's an experimental film and Paz Encina, the director, she immersed in, in herself in this uh, community in the middle of, of, uh, of the forest in Paraguay and she met, she met these people and they talked about mythology and this film follows the story of Ami, a five-year-old girl mm -hmm. who's the bird god and tell, tells a story about how her whole community is getting kicked off of, of her land and it's a beautiful yeah. film and it's a very important film that talks about uh, displacement. So it's almost like a documentary, really. Yes. Okay. Um, are you noticing a common theme this year in many of the films? Like, I know there are other years where we've talked and the theme has been very political mm -hmm. or very much about the arts mm -hmm. or, you know, social injustices. What are you noticing? I, I think this year, the, it's very eclectic, the 
terms of films, the one thing and the one common thread that I find, at least in our documentaries, is the willingness to experiment more with the form. You know, so you no longer have these documents. We do have a couple of documentaries that are straightforward, traditional documentaries. What do you mean by that? Like just like, in the like, length of time? Like the life, slice of life or very investigative, okay. fact-driven. But there are plenty more, I will say, a significant percentile of our documentaries this year are experimenting with this hybrid format in which they're using the tools of fiction narrative to tell a real story while basing it on fact. I mean, EAM is a perfectly good example in that they explore the deforestation of this rarely known uh, community in Paraguay, indigenous community in Paraguay, and they're using it through myth. So that's, I think, the one thread that I did find among the documentaries, the willingness to experiment more with form. Okay. Next up on the list is one called Nightlight, and I'll let you talk about Actually, it as well. No, I'll, yeah. let, I'll let Andrea talk Andrea? about that okay. one because that's okay. part of the shorts program, and Andrea was pretty much hands-on on that one. And the, the shorts program, is that like the documentary shorts? or No, it's all shorts. Okay. All the short films that we have this year. Okay, Nightlight. Um, so tell me about that. Yeah, Nightlight is... Um, an incredible short that actually premiered in Cannes in 2022. It was on the runner-up for the Palm d'Or of short films. And it's the short film about a 17-year-old girl who has two siblings, younger siblings, and she is forced into motherhood when their mother abandons them in the middle of the Costa Rica forest and she's not coming back. Wow. And she struggles to uh, let her siblings know that they're on, they're on their own. That sounds incredible, like an incredible, an incredible story. Short yeah. Film, yeah. Okay. And you said it was runner-up in at the Cannes fin Film Festival. Yes, in recently? 2022. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up is Santos Skin to Skin. I, we do have a little bit of audio that we can play from for that one. So let's have the producer bring that up, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. We'd like to invite a couple of guests who are here visiting from Havana, Cuba. We're going to play a rumba. They never heard it before. Let's see what happens. <laughs> This, this is like a documentary. It is a yeah, straightforward okay. documentary, a profile of the uh, Afro, Afro Latino uh, percussionist, uh, mm -hmm. John Santos, based out of East L uh, San Francisco, actually, sorry, not East LA, San Francisco, half Cape Verdean, half Puerto Rican. He's played with some of the giants, he's played with Santana, Eddie Palmieri, Jerry Medina. The uh, documentary ex follows him as he teaches percussion, as he travels to the island as he performs with other musicians. And the thing about this film is that not only are we presenting the film at the festival, but Young Santos will be in town, not only to introduce and participate in our Q&As, but he's going to be holding a uh, workshop lecture at the Segundo Ruiz Valley Cultural Center on February, April 21st. And that's part of our ongoing mission to try to find ways to connect our films to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been trying to do that for the last, we've been doing that for the last year or four years. Most of them were in the form of actual film presentations in the community. This year we wanted to do it, take one more step. We wanted to be something a little bit much more participatory, but related to the festival, but not necessarily film. So in this case, it's a recital slash workshop. We're going to have a discussion with female fil uh, uh, filmmakers on the first Saturday of the festival, also at the Second Ruiz Belvis Cultural Center. So it's a way to engage the community outside of just showing films. Yeah, it's always so great that you do those Q&As because it builds ideas yeah. for the future, yeah. right, for other films and other filmmakers that are coming in. So yeah. uh, we appreciate it, and I'm sure so does the community. Let's bring the information up on the screen. If folks are interested, once again, in the 39th Annual Chicago Latino Film Festival, well, again, the biggest one in the U.S., really, April 13th through the 23rd, it's running with opening night on the 13th. You can buy tickets. You can buy, like, what, what do you call it, a pass. A pass. You can buy the a pass for pass. You can buy yeah. as many tickets as possible. We'll have merchandise. Oh, is this the first year you have merchandise? No, we've always no, had no, it, but always. I never fixed it, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a first time There's for everything. There's a first everything. time for everything. Right, sounds good. There's the info. Uh, enjoy. Good luck this year. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.